The Super Soco TC Max is the first motorcycle that I ever owned and today I'm going to be sharing my experience of owning this fully electric motorcycle. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Artist Adventures and I cover lots of motorcycle related topics as well as the adventures that I go on and I've got plenty planned for this year so feel free to subscribe so you can come along on the journey. Now let's get into the video. Let's start by taking a quick look at the design of the bike. I remember being pretty impressed with how it looked when it was delivered. It has a sporty style and a nice shape to it. And overall I do think it's a good looking bike. The only area I think it lets itself down is it feels like there's a lot of plastic on show. And also the text and logos have been added with stickers. Whereas it might have looked a bit nicer if they were built into the paintwork on the bike. Overall though I think it's a good looking bike and it's nice to see electric motorcycle designers are focusing on style and not just functionality. Before taking delivery of this motorcycle, I'd only ever ridden a motorcycle once before for a few hours on my CBT. Luckily the Super Soco TC Max handles really well, so it's definitely a great option for newer riders. It's fully automatic, so that means that you can concentrate on all the other aspects of riding without having to worry about gears. It has a pretty good suspension and it's a comfortable ride. And one of my favourite parts of riding this motorcycle was the power delivery. From a standing start you really do notice the difference compared to petrol bikes. You can accelerate off the line really quickly and it feels very nippy, it's good fun. When you start getting up to higher speeds on the electric motorcycle, I did notice that the power delivery is actually a bit less effective and I think petrol wins there. But you do also notice that the battery can start to drain pretty quickly if you're doing 70 miles per hour. So now let's have a look at specs and performance. The TC Max has the equivalent power of a 125cc engine, which means you can ride this bike on a learner license. And like I said, it does feel very nippy. As soon as you twist that accelerator, it delivers instant power because there's no gears. So you really do fly from a standing start. It has a digital display. And so that provides all the key information like your speed, how much battery you have left and range. And it also has a keyless ignition system, which is pretty convenient. So as long as you've got the key in your pocket, you can just press the on button on the bike and it will turn on. But one thing I would say on that is that when you press the button, it does play a little tune. Some people don't like the sound. Um, personally, I really didn't mind. But I did notice heads would turn when I started the bike up because of that noise. So that could put some people off. It's got an LED headlight which most newer bikes have. And for security it has a built in alarm and a sim card. So you can actually track the location on the Super Soco app. And that will also track the routes that you've ridden as well. And I'll talk a bit more about the app in the next section when we look at battery and charging. So the Super Soco TC Max battery range is around 100 kilometers. That will obviously vary depending on what kind of roads you're driving on, how fast you're going, the conditions and, and things like that. To charge the bike, it actually works on a normal three pin UK plug, the same as you'd have on your devices at home. So that's great for when you are charging the bike at home, but it's not so great if you want to charge the bike at a service station because they normally operate on a different type of charger, like the ones you might see for electric cars. You are able to actually remove the battery from the bike. So if you haven't got a plug near the bike, but you want to get some charge in it, you can actually take it out and bring it inside. For example, it might be that you drive a bike to work, you carry the battery into the office and charge it in there. What I would say is that it's pretty bulky and heavy. So you probably wouldn't want to be doing that all the time unless you had to. I found personally that it takes around eight hours for the battery to fully charge. So I normally just put it on overnight in the garage and then it'll be ready to go in the morning. And on the Super Soco app, it'll actually show you how much battery charge you've got on the bike, which is quite convenient if you just want to have a look without going out into the garage. You get a three year warranty on the battery and motor for the bike, as well as a two year warranty for the frame and other components. But it gives you that peace of mind that if anything breaks and you can get some help. If you're enjoying the video, please consider giving it a like and subbing to the channel. It really helps out and it means I can bring more great content for you guys. Now let's have a quick look at the sound of the Super Soco. I'm not sure the best way to describe the sound of a Super Soco, but here's some examples so that you can hear what it sounds like. In a strange way, I kind of did like the noise the bike made. It's a kind of whirring noise and it does mean that you're able to pick up on other noises more easily but personally i don't think it can compare at all to the roaring noises you get from a petrol bike let's quickly talk about maintenance there's not much to add here one of the best bits about owning an electric motorcycle is that it's very low maintenance there's no gears or oil and it has a maintenance free drive belt rather than a chain so really it's just a case of keeping an eye on things like the tires brakes and brake fluid 
You do still need to get a service, but they're often a bit cheaper because there's a bit less work that people need to do as well. Finally, I want to cover why I switched to a petrol motorcycle instead. Um, I went and got the Honda CB125R. Plenty of videos about that bike on my channel if you're interested. But there's a few reasons why I switched. You might have guessed some of them based on what I've already said in this video. So one is the engine sound. So the Super Soco is really fun to drive. It's pretty nippy, but without the engine sound and the revs, it just felt like something was missing. And I do really prefer the riding experience when there's some noise coming out of the engine. Another reason is that I wanted to learn how to ride a geared bike so that I could get my full motorcycle license. And then that would just mean that I have more options on the bikes I can ride in the future. And then the final reason was the range. So I've got some pretty big adventures planned and the range of this motorcycle just wouldn't be able to do it. As I think this motorcycle is more suited to a commuter and doing shorter trips and city driving. So to sum things up, the Super Soco TC Max is a great electric motorcycle and I'm really glad I owned one, especially as a new rider. I never had any problems with it and everything worked as expected. So if you are in the market for an electric motorcycle, then I would say this is a great option. It's efficient, it's nippy, it's got a comfortable ride and it's pretty easy to charge at home with little to no maintenance needed other than the usual service. I do think electric motorcycles are only going to get better and I would consider getting one again in the future. But for now, I really do love riding petrol bikes. Thanks for watching. I should be able to get back out on the motorcycle as the weather warms up here in the UK. Feel free to sub to the channel if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in the next one.